Hello, Empower Nation. Welcome to Empower Her Money Podcast. I am your host, Angela Duncan, speaker, best-selling author, and serial entrepreneur. Today's episode is sponsored by freemoneytipsbook.com, freemoneytipsbook.com. Make sure you head over there and get your free ebook to get you started on your financial journey. Today's episode, I am interviewing Adriana Monreal, and she is going to talk to us about how she went from being a bartender to being a marketing director for a large company just by saying yes to the right opportunity. Welcome, Adriana, to the show. How are you today? I'm doing fine, Angela. How are you doing? I am awesome. Thank you so much for joining me today. I'm excited for you to share a little bit more about yourself. So why don't you go ahead and get started? Tell us about, you know, your journey and how you got um, to where you are today. Okay. Um, so what I do is I'm director of marketing um, for a company that was, I was picked up by, I was actually working as a bartender. I had worked there for six years. I had worked previously at Nike for six years as well. And I had a guy come in every single day, strike up conversation with me every day. Uh, we ended up hitting it off. He ended up being a really cool guy, really outgoing, taught me a lot just in, those, just in that month that I knew him. And he really liked me a lot too. So he asked me out to breakfast. Um, he was talking a lot about business. Um, I learned, a I'm telling you, every time I go with this guy, I learned so much. So he finally told me what he does, which he's the CEO of his company and they sell forklift batteries. And he asked me to come along and come on the team as a, as marketing. And I don't, I've never had any experience in marketing. I didn't even know what marketing was. I know, all I know is that people go to school for four years for this. And I know this because my best friend is a journalist and she told me all about that. So when he told me about that, I was very, I was very scared to jump into something very, very, very different, but I knew I was ready for a change. So I ended up, I ended up becoming his uh, marketing director and I'm learning as I go. So as of right now, I am, I'm literally learning everything there is to know about marketing, all the marketing events he's been sending me to for 10X. We've been going to marketing events here in El Paso. Um, so I'm learning as I go. I'm learning anything I can, whether it has to be with digital content, the web design, the social media, all that good stuff. And my life has took a big turn in the last, I would say, three months. My life is not the same. My life, now I work in an office. Now I work with different people. Now I work, like, I, I've, I was so used to working with different people at the bar, but not in this in this caliber it's just very different it's it's very it's, new you took and a leap of faith with someone it who... really did take yeah. a leap of faith and you know my dad is very good with detachment he always told he always told me you're not a quitter but you need to know when to leave you need mm -hmm. to know when that it's that you know it's time to get up yeah. and and we were talking when we had lunch at the 10x marketing event a lot of people would see my life now how i put it on instagram obviously I don't know how they perceive me now. I don't know, you know, like, but they would tell me, wow, can you believe what's going on? Can you believe that you got into a job that you need four years of experience and a degree on and you just got it? And they, they trusted in you to, you know, take the lead of their company, really, because marketing is a foundation of any business. Mm -hmm. And they would tell me, can you believe that? Can you believe that? And I would tell them, yes, I can believe that. I put on my vision board, I put... Black American Express cards on my vision boards. I put the biggest cars and nicest cars. And it's not about the materialistic things. It's just, you know what? Um, I don't. I don't know. Like I, I would hate for people to think it's materialistic things. But it's just that's the yeah. life I want. That's you know, that's bus That's the business life I want. Who do you know in business that doesn't have American Express cards? To me, that's business. That's, but it's and, very good. You know, like, it's very good marketing and branding that they're doing, right? Yes, yes, yes. And for the longest time, I had made a vision board. And every single year, I would put something different. I would put two phones, one for personal, one for business. I would put American Express cards. I would put skyline, skyline views. I would put apartment views that just overlook Miami, overlook New York, you know. And slowly, everything that I have put on my vision board ever since freshman year, because I revise it every single year, 
everything has been coming true. I've been able to mark off everything. Um, but one thing I, and somebody told me about this the other day too. They were like, um, you're never looking down, to, you're never looking to like settle down or, you know, have some kids or anything like that. And right now I'm not thinking about that. I don't care for that. I don't, I don't see myself in the future. And I see my, I always look in the future at least three or five years in. I don't see myself with a kid or a husband or anything like that. Um, and I'll, this is a big question that I had for Elena at the 10X event, the 10X ladies was, is it bad that I don't want a husband? Is it bad that I don't want kids? Yeah. A lot of people try to tell me it's a, it's a, a trauma response, like a hyper independence, mm -hmm. which I can, I can see that, but I don't, it's not a trauma response. I've never been through a bad relationship. I've, my parents are still together. They're, they've been together for 50 plus years. I have four older brothers. We all get along great. Like I have a very good perception on men. I know there's great men out there. I know those, those there's men out there that will take me from level 10 to level 100 in months and in a short you know time frame. It's and, just not on your plan right now. And who knows what the future might hold. And that's okay. You know what you know what you want. And it's amazing how you can see when you put that vision board together and you tell your brain, this is what I want. It starts searching for that information in your life. And then it, you realize it. So that's amazing. I, lo I love hearing that, you know, and the fact that someone else saw that in you and said, hey, I want to give you an opportunity. But it took for you to say yes. It yeah. took for you to go to the events. It took for you to get the information. It took for you to come back and implement it. So mm -hmm. he may have given you the opportunity, but really you had to take action on it as well. Because if you hadn't, then maybe you wouldn't still be in the position and growing like you are. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There was, a, there was a, a quote from Grant Cardone. I don't know if it was Grant Cardone or Elena Cardone. I can't, really can't remember. But they were saying... When your life is in order, when you're going where you want to go in life, you will not see obstacles. You'll see opportunities. Mm -hmm. I've always thought, ever since she, ever since whoever said that, I really thought on it for a long time. Because for so long, I've, a lot of people would always tell me, you're really quick to get up and leave. You know, you're, when somebody disrespects you or something happens at the workplace or just something happens, I will gladly get up and leave because I know it no longer serves me. Mm -hmm. I look at things for what they are, not for what I want it to be. Mm-hmm. We have to, we, we live in the real world and the real world is harsh. You know, if you know that job is not going to serve you, get up and leave. There will be a better job. And I've always thought that in any relationship, in any job, there's better. There's always going to be better. There's better, there's better, there's better. And I always tell people, if you're behind a closed door, you will not see the opportunity on the other side. You yeah. need to open the door. I don't yeah. care what it is. It's going to be a big risk. But the worst thing, you just got to close the door again. That's the worst that could happen. The worst they could say is no. The worst you can do is go back to plan A. The worst you can do is go back and regroup, re, you know, brainstorm again. Not everything works out, but that's that's the thing. You can always go back and fix it again. Nothing is permanent, at least in my mind. Everything yeah. can be fixed. Everything can be fixed for the better. And Now, you said the last few months for you has really changed. What have you done differently that you feel like has helped you through those changes or to make those changes? Through those changes, I always knew something great was going to come about. I never knew what it was. I just knew something great is coming along. So I'm just ready. I'm ready. And when it comes, I'm not going to be surprised. I'm going to take it and I'm going to run with it. But because I did get a lot of stress put on me with the school and just everything about marketing. I know when the marketing, um, you know, marketing teams have different people for certain jobs. They have certain people for the website, certain people for the social media, certain people for traditional marketing, analytical marketing, it was all that good stuff. I'm learning to do that all together. And so because I had so much stress put on me and I feel like I'm not going crazy, but it's like a lot going on. I've been coming outside every single morning an hour. Like I'll wake up an hour earlier, which is another thing Grant Cardone says that will change your life. It's a little thing I feel will change your life. Mm -hmm. But I started waking up an hour early, and then I would come outside and drink a tea or a coffee, depending on how I'm feeling that day. It's most. It's usually a coffee. I'm trying to be more healthy with the tea because I do. Um, I do juice. I do detox because I have really bad skin, so that helps out a lot. But I've been really just coming out here, drinking my tea or my coffee, and I'll write in my planner what I, what I did the day before, 
all my successes from yesterday and what I plan to do today so that mm. the next day I come back and reflect. I'll see if I got what I was supposed to do yesterday done. And if I don't, I reflect on that. I'll think about why I didn't do it or I'll just, I'll just brainstorm my life for that day. But what really, really changed my life, really changed my life. I will just sit down for a good 10 minutes, five minutes. I won't put the timer because I know it won't go too long, but I'll literally just sit down and I'll just mm-hmm. stare out into nothing. And I'll just think about where I'm at in life, where I want to be in life. All the times I was a little girl and I'll think about, wow, my 12 year old self would be so, like she would think I'm so cool right now. Like <laughs> just anything and everything positive that comes to my mind, I'll just sit in my stillness and I'll just sit and just reflect and be thankful and be grateful and think about what's next to come. So I'll pretty much plan a little vision board in my head every single day. And it's just nothing but good vibes, nothing but good positive thoughts. So that's what keeps me still. Like, I won't get up sometimes for 30 minutes or sometimes my dad will come out here and I'll be like, are you done? You look, are you okay? And I'll be like, yeah, I'm fine. But that's yeah. what I do. And I feel like that's what changed my life. To yeah. Me. So you're starting, you know, because if you start your day chaotic, then you live in chaos. But you're starting your day in stillness. You're being grateful. You're focusing on what you want. You're focusing on you know, you're reflecting on what, what haven't I done yet? What is in the future? What does that look like? And then you're kind of just being one with like nature, being outside in that stillness and being grateful for, you know, the, the tiny things that are around you, you know, the sunlight, you know, maybe a bird is chirping, but just being in that moment and being still. Um, I think I'm a huge believer on how you start your day is how your life is. And so when you're starting your day with such calmness like that, then the rest of your life kind of flows in that same direction. So that's a great morning routine. Um, so you've mentioned that you've gone to some events. I'm sure, you know, coming to an event the, for the first time might be a little bit scary, but what did you change as far as like your perspective? How do you approach the event so that you make sure you're getting value from it too? Well, I've always, I've always told myself I had social anxiety or avoidant personality. I've even read a few books on it, which I believe confirmed my own diagnosis um but you know I'm telling you there's many great quotes that come out of Grant Cardone's that I've been taking in and I've been soaking it in but another one is um he says um he's really big on networking but he had said a quote that says conversation is a new conversion or conversation is a new currency that's what he said Mm -hmm. and I really thought about that because before I would I was told to mind my business, to be on my own P's and Q's or Q's and P's, just to stay, mind my business, don't mind anybody else's business. That's how people like you. They don't like people that jump in. They don't like, you know, like that's what I was told. That's how I have been taught. That's how I was, you know, conditioned. And so for so long, I thought, you know, just stay back, learn from other people, learn from what you're hearing, stay back, be, you know, I don't... I don't know how to explain it, but I was just told to just not say nothing, to just absorb my environment, really. But going to these events really taught me, you know what? You need to go out there and you need to speak to everybody. You never know who you're speaking to. You never know who can change your life. You never know what type of tools that they can give you that will change your life. Like the thing with how I met my CEO, I was working at a bar. I served him the best I can. I gave him the best conversation that anybody could get I gave him my genuine time of day I I really did I really did enjoy talking to this guy and I remember whenever all that good stuff happened I would tell my friends this is why you talk to people and you don't just talk to people to talk to people get to know them strike up a conversation what do they do you know it's not using them when I say talk to people that you can get something out of be in the right room with the right people like you say Mm-hmm. Like it's not using them. You're using their brains, you know, brains should be used every day. And if you're not going to use it, I'll use it. And if you don't want to use it today, I'll use some of it today. Mm-hmm. But that's like, you never know who you're talking to. You never know who's going to be there. Um, I had met on the marketing event where I saw you the second day, I had met a, a marketing agency who do mar- who does marketing, certain certain things for marketing, specifically for the construction industry, the logistics, mm-hmm. industrial and I had never seen that before. And I had been looking up, looking it up every single day. And this guy finally popped into my life. And I knew he was marketing because I overheard him. 
And I thought to myself, you know what, if I just stay down and shut up and mind my business, I'm not going to get any connection with them. I'm not going to get his number, nothing. So going to those marketing events really taught me, you know what, get up and go talk to them. Ask for their LinkedIn, ask for their WhatsApp, ask for their number, you know, strike up a conversation, let them be interested. Don't be interesting. Nobody wants to hear somebody just talk about themselves all the time, you know, you know make them make them feel special, you know, and like. Even going to those events even taught me how to conversate, you know, mm -hmm. that be interesting, interested instead of interesting, that that blew my mind. I thought, wow, here I am thinking I have to talk to prove myself, but really, you know, just let the conversation flow so easily. Like if you're talking to a five-year-old, that's, yeah, yeah. that's how I think of it. I want to get to know them. So I'm going to ask those silly questions, but you know, those are the questions I need to be asked. So really just networking and not being scared to get out there and ask people what they do. How, is there any way I can help you? Is there any way I could jump on? Is there any, you know, just don't be shy. Don't be shy anymore. All right. So what, one more piece of advice. If you could tell someone who was you five years ago to do something different, what kind of advice would you give that person? Or what would you give yourself five years ago? Five years ago, let's see. I was... Working at Nike, which is the best company I've ever worked for ever in my life. And to do something different, I would say to, to stop seeing people for who you want them to be and mm -hmm. for who they really are. Because right. back then, I would give so much people the benefit of the doubt. I would stay in friendships that I knew I shouldn't have been in. Um, they, I mean, we all have those friends that we tolerate. Not because, not in a bad way, just sometimes, you know, they, they have the bad habits you don't want to pick up, but you know, like to stick with them and help them through that. That's how I always saw it. You know, I would never leave my friends because something, something happened with them or whatever. I'm a friend. That's, that's what a friend is. You help them and you stay with them and grow with them. But for so long, for the longest time, I was hanging out with friends that didn't benefit me at all. They were doing yeah. drugs, you know, they were going out every every night on, on weekdays on, you know, when they knew we had school the next morning and I, you know, I was sticking by them and just hoping that they would just get out of this phase. Cause I, I've never been a drinker. I'm 25 years old. I've never, ever, I, w I was always a designated driver cause they knew I wasn't drinking. So I would right. just go yeah. along for the ride. I would have a lot of fun, you know? Yeah. But, but they weren't I, heading in the direction that you were well, going. So, you know, People come into your life, they could be for a minute, they could be for a season, they could be for a lifetime. So it sounds like you recognize that and you're not wishing them any bad will, but they're just not heading in the same direction. So you have to continue to surround yourself with people that are going to help you get to that next level. And then you're going to continue to help people as they come into your life as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. I... I love that. I so let them go and I wish them good. But right now, although I may not have as much friends as I did before, all everybody that I'm surrounded with, every everybody that I have in my life is who is going to stay in my life for the next 20 plus years. And they are the people that are going to upgrade me like no one ever can. I, yeah. I, the people that I have in my life, they will upgrade me. They will never let me fall either. That's it. Yeah. Well, I hope to be there too, because I want to watch your journey and how you grow. I love what you've done so far and how you just have jumped right in and you know you've taken that chance you've said yes to a new opportunity and you're learning and growing and implementing and taking action and just you know that that's a huge thing so I love that so I do have a fun question for you as we start to wrap up the show um, if you could have a superpower what would it be and why a superpower let's see if I had a superpower Hmm. I don't really think on that too much, which I am going to actually start thinking on it a little bit more because it's like, what do I wish to have? You know, what do I crave? What do I want to work towards? If I had a superpower, I would want to read people's minds because I feel I'm so good on reading body language and adapting to my environment and seeing, you know, I, I just feel like I'm always aware of what's going on. It could be 10 people in the room. I know what everybody's thinking and body language wise. But if I had the superpower to read everybody's mind, I could solve everybody's problem which in business that's what you want to do solve everybody's problem that's how you have business so that's that's what i would that's that's what my superpower would be read people's minds so i don't have to read their body language i just want to know what you're thinking that's it. yeah 
Yeah, awesome. Well, I appreciate the interview today, Adriana. Um, if our audience wants to reach you, has more questions, or maybe just wants to be a part of your story too, what's the best way for them to find you? The best way for them to find me is on my Instagram. It's Adri with three eyes, Adri three eyes, underscore 12. And I'm very active on that. I will um, I will soon be having a lot more uh, business accounts. I'm getting my headshot done. Um, I'm coming up in the business world. So next time you guys see me, I'll have a headshot. I'll have a really good LinkedIn page, all that good stuff. Awesome. I'm, really awesome. Up. I'm so excited for you and I can't wait to continue to watch you on your journey. So thank you so much for being on Empower Her Money podcast. And I really really appreciate you thank you thank you angela and i'll see you at next at the next future 10x events oh absolutely all right we'll talk soon thank you, thank you so much angela yep thank you for tuning in to another episode of empower her money podcast make sure you leave me a five-star review share this podcast subscribe and share the message